sins. They don't want the sin saver to step on the scene. I don't want to step on nobody's toes. I, I, I know it's just a, a good time of Christmas, but you know, God's word is God's word, but I, I came to tell you, so here they was, and you know, they said, we, we don't want to hear about, we don't want to hear about Christ. We want to hear about this. You know, Herod was mad when he found out that the, the star was shining. Y'all heard that last week. But, but he was upset because that means he had to change his arena. That means the tradition that was going on had to stop somebody. My Lord. That was a nugget. Yes. In other words, all the sinful stuff, the popping and the dropping and the smoking and the snorting, all that had to stop. All the lying and the backstabbing and the Christians proclaiming to be saved and they turning around talking about one another and doing everything that they possibly can do to hurt somebody. All that has to stop. Yeah. They didn't want to hear that. So here it was. They liked the silent part. Because silence means they couldn't be taught nothing. But I came to tell you that Mary found herself pregnant. She didn't understand because she didn't lay down with nobody. She was still a virgin. Yeah. Joseph had already proclaimed this was going to be his wife. He didn't understand what was going on. He was saying, wait a minute, but nature say uh, A plus A. Uh, uh, wait a minute, hold on a second. You know how it is if your wife come home and say, baby, I'm pregnant. You're like, wait a minute, we ain't did nothing in 10 months. What you mean you're two months pregnant? You guys would have a fit. Am I, is anybody with me? But here it is, Joseph didn't understand. Joseph was like, well, wait a minute. I got to keep it clean because it's you, son, and too many kids in here. But y'all adults can read between the lines. Joseph was like, wait a minute. We wasn't knocking no boots now. What you, what you talking about, you with child? Yes. We, we, we didn't come together. What's going on? Yeah. Joseph was going to put her away. He was going to make an example of her. Yes. I said he was going to make an example of her. Now back in those days, if a woman went out and she cheated, tradition was she got stoned to death. But Joseph's heart was like, I don't want to get stoned. I love this woman, you know. I just don't understand what's going on. You know how it is in your situation. Some things that come about and you just don't understand what's going on. But an angel, the Bible tells me, had to talk to him. You know how it is. An angel got to come talk to you sometime. In the midst of your stuff, an angel has to come and say, wait a minute, hold up, stop. This is of the Holy Ghost. I came to tell somebody that in the midst of your situation when you don't understand it, you still got to know that God's in control. Yes. You still have to understand that in spite of being in a silent period, in spite of not hearing from God, that he's still in control. I'm trying to help somebody in the house today. So getting back to my story of this silent period, here it was that, you know, the Romans decided they was going to take over the church. Yes. They didn't want to hear about Christ. Mm. The Romans were very known for their barbaric ways of how they tortured people. And so the Romans decided that, you know what, we're going to get in the church and we're going to run the church. We want to reign. Mm. That was a nugget. Uh, yes. You know how it is. We got some Roman folks down to come into church and tell you how to run the church. They want to tell you how to preach the to the word and when you should preach and what you should do and who should be in the house and who shouldn't be in the house and what they going to sing on this day and what not they going to sing and what they going to do and how they going to run off and how they not going to run off and I go, oh, let me get back to my story. <laughs> so here it is. They find themselves with the Romans taking over the church. They said, we're going to take all of these churches and we're going to name all these Catholic churches. This is it. We're going to do it our way. Yeah. But in the midst of them doing their way, you know, there's always somebody that say, in spite of, I got to seek God for myself. Yeah. In spite of the tradition, I still got to walk out on faith because I know who the real king is. In spite of what's going on on the left side of the church, I still got to walk righteous. In spite of, amen. So here it is. There were some folks that said, we're going to learn about Jesus anyhow <laughs> because we know his coming is coming. We don't know when the time, the day, or the hour, but we know that he's coming. That was a whole nother nugget. So you got to get right because you don't know when he's coming. So here it is. We had some priests that could not be bought by the Romans. They could not be bought children. They decided they were going to do it God's way anyway. So they were going to decide that they were going to teach their children about Christ. What better way to teach your children than in songs? I'm going to help somebody. Anybody know about the 12 days of Christmas? Let me help you with the 12 days of 
Christmas. It goes a little something like this. On the first day of Christmas, my true love gave to me. Let me tell you something. That was mean to that. The first day of Christmas, my true love gave to me a partridge in a pear tree. The partridge, let me tell you what the partridge is. The partridge is represented to Jesus Christ himself. The partridge is a bird that is known to lay down his life for his young. It will protect the nest at no cost. So on the first day of Christmas, my true love gave to me a partridge in a pear tree. See, he came, he was going to be born so that he can protect us from our sins. That he can save us even from ourselves in spite of tradition that was going on. He was still going to save us. In, in Matthew uh, 1 and 21 it says, and he shall bring forth a son and that son shall be called Jesus and he shall save his people from his sins. He was a partridge in a pear tree. My true love is your first love. Your first love in your life is Jesus Christ. On the second day of Christmas, my true love gave to me two turtle doves. See, he gave us a gift, my God. The two turtle doves represent the Old and the New Testament. See, he wasn't going to leave you without him, my God. I'm trying to tell you what Christmas is all about. On the third day of Christmas, my true 
take to me. Ten lords are leaping. Ten lords are leaping. It stands for the Ten Commandments. You can check them out right there on the wall. Or oh, there's something here on this wall. If you don't want to read on the wall, go to Exodus, the 20th chapter. It'll tell you that you shouldn't be lying and stealing and murdering. It should tell you that you have no other gods before you. All you have to do is check them out. It should tell you that you should not covet nothing of your neighbors, my God. We got to learn to live right. If you're going to do this right, you better learn to live right. Y'all make it and shake it and get some work. Tell somebody in that kid, you're going to live right. Yeah. 
I used to tell my brothers, you hang out if you want to. Listen, authorities tell somebody, you got to face life. They gonna get the singing like a blue jay. So it's best to live right and don't get caught up. Because somebody gonna betray you. Live right. I didn't say go start judging nobody. I said live right. Don't go start talking about nobody, but live right. We got to live right. I think I better get off that. He is looking at me crazy. I got to get to the 12th day of Christmas. Because on the 12th day of Christmas, my true love gave to me 12 drummers drumming. Those sound like the 12 points of the Apostle Creed Doctrine. So I had to go look it up. You know, I kind of like the book of Acts. But I had to go look it up. What's the 12 points of the Apostle Creed? They have articles 1 through 12. Let me help you. Article number one says, I believe in God, the Father, the Almighty, the Creator of heaven and earth. That sounds like my cup of tea. Right there. I said, oh, I agree with that one. Article number two says, and in Jesus Christ, his only son, our Lord. I said, oh, yeah, I believe in that too. I looked at article three. He says, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of a virgin Mary. I said, oh, yeah, I agree with that because it's scripture. I looked at article four and it says, he suffered under Pontius Pilate, who was crucified. He was crucified. He died and he was buried. Uh -huh. I believe that too. Article 5 says he descended into hell. How many of you know he had the keys to hell? Yeah, he descended Lord. into hell. But on the third day, somebody said the third day, he rose from the dead because he knew he had to come save us from our sins. Thank <laughs> you. 
point tonight. Article number 10 says, the forgiveness of sins. I told you when we opened our scripture that he was coming to save us from our sins. Yes. And it has an S behind it too. When you look up the Apostle Creed, there is an S behind the sins. He said, you know what, there is a thing called repentance. And all you've got to do is ask God, say, Lord, I need you to forgive me. I did wrong. You know, the Bible says in James, you know, you confess your faults one to another, amen. But I came to confess to God on today because we have all sinned and we've all fallen short of the glory of God. But when you begin to repent, my God, and ask God to forgive you, God will do just that. And when he forgives you, don't go back and do that sin no more. That's why he tells you in, in 2 Chronicles 7 and 14, if my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray. So I always 
always wanted to, before I even took any tradition or clothing style, I wonder what does it mean? But I believe that everybody should know the meaning of Christmas. See, here it was, we did have some priests back in those days that was not going to submit to the Romans. They were going to teach their children. They put it in songs. That's a nugget. Somebody yeah, got to teach your children about yeah. Christ Jesus. Any way your child will understand it, you have to put it in a form that they can get it. You have to tell them the true meaning of a candy cane, a simple candy cane. It is so sweet like Jesus. Yeah. You know why the candy cane is red and white? It represents the blood that he dripped for us on Calvary. Yeah. My God, and it hangs from the tree. I had my arm up here, hangs on from the tree. That tree of life, of true and life, the life of living. I came to tell you that before you do anything, know why you're doing it. Because if you're just doing church just because mama damn did church, you done already missed the mark. If you're doing church because a judge told you you had to come and do church, you already missed the mark. You need to get in and say, I want to know who this Christ Jesus is. I want to know the man that died on the cross for me. I want to know if he did a miracle for you, then he could do one for me. Because he's the same 